Hello world! Um, today I thought I'd make a video that's a bit different to my digital illustrations. Um, I thought I'd try customizing this jacket. It's what I do anyways. Um, I get like thrifted, vintage, recycled, hand-me-down, anything as long as it's been used and I paint my illustrations on it and it's been very therapeutic for me for the last couple of years and yeah so today it's gonna be a maybe a tutorial DIY kind of thing um, I'm gonna be customizing this jacket I hope you can see it properly um, that one of my friends sent me while we're in lockdown to paint on and yeah, but usually the first thing to do if you want to do it properly and not just wing it is do a sketch. So that's what I'm going to start with and then we're going to go ahead and start painting. Alright guys, so how you can see from like my sketch <laughs> So I've got a general idea of what I want to do uh, But everything is subject to change as we go along But the main bit that I want to do on this jacket The title or like the main shadow side aspect That I'm pretty certain of what I want to do with it but yeah, so I'm going to start doing this bit now, um, sketch over. So the next bit would be to do a loose sketch on the jacket. And actually, when I was sketching, I had a pretty good idea that I'm going to share with you guys when I'm doing this. Cool. Alright guys. So I've got my sketch next to me. And I've got two ways of doing this sketch and I'm going to kind of do both because depending on your jacket, you'll find a way to make it work, right? So I've got this white pencil and because this is leather, it's not really showing up a lot, but it's showing up enough for me to just see it. So I'm going to use this to kind of start sketching out. Da -da -da, um, my design on here and I've got a little board something hard just in between the two just so it's not like all bumpy it's got shoulder pads though so it's gonna be a bit of a mission but we're gonna get there no worries Alright, so that's that we're done with pencil. Now, the other way you could sketch this, if you're a bit braver, um, is to use a black marker. I'm using Posca pens because they're paint pens. So if you're painting on leather, make sure you use um, a paint marker. You could use a permanent marker. If you use a permanent marker, a lot of them will give you that shine um, once it's dry, so it's not the design might not look as crisp in sunlight because it's going to be reflecting light. So Posca pens are good because they're pretty matte. So whatever angle you're at, you're going to get like a true color and it's not going to be warped with the sunlight. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the black. And the reason I'm doing it with black is because it's a black leather jacket. So in case it doesn't come off, I'm not too worried about it because kind of going to blend in. All 
And here I'm actually making the bubble letters that I like. Um, with the pencil, I just did like straight lines. This will help with the next step as well. So when you use your black marker, you don't have to do super like a lot, a lot of detail, but if you do like the general shapes is gonna help you with the next step. All right. Now see when it dries, you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see it in this one. Let me get up and check. You can kind of see the outline, but you know, like, if you mess up, no one's gonna judge you on this. Or they shouldn't anyway. All right, um, and then we are gonna do the little shadow lines. Da, da, da. All right, cool. Now uh, I'm gonna pause it and try it on. At this point, I would recommend you try your jacket on and just make sure that everything is actually like in proportion. Um, you can check that it's kind of in the center, just check that it, like the image kind of works in the spot it is in when you're wearing it. Okay guys, so I'm trying it on and I checked in the mirror outside my room that it does look alright. I'm gonna try and show you, but to be honest, where, with my photo booth video, I don't know if you can, will be able to see it. But, maybe if I move this... Okay, there you go. So you can kind of see a little bit like where I've written when it's in the sunlight. And this is actually a good example as to why um, a matte paint marker like Posca pens are better than just a normal like Sharpie. Because Sharpie, this would be shiny and it's going to go like the leather is already shiny and then the marker is going to be shiny. So you're not going to have such a good end result because when you walk around wearing it the marker is gonna like the paints the permanent marker paint is gonna reflect the light whilst this when it's done i'll show you um it's gonna pretty much stay matte and that means that no matter what angle you're at people are gonna be able to clearly see what you've drawn and not have to move and be like oh, oh what are you, what have you drawn like they'll be able to tell so yeah, now it's coming to the fun part, so I'm excited, all right. Okay, all right, so now we've turned it on and we're happy and we've got our base sketch. Now here is where I'm gonna try this out for the first time on camera and I'm gonna tell you how to do it. So if this flops, don't do it. If it ends up good, we just made a discovery. So, um, when you are painting leather jackets you must always prime the leather because what, how they make the leather jackets last is that after they've used the leather they seal it with this chemical so it doesn't rot what you gotta do is prime the leather so the paint sticks because it's not gonna stick on the chemical that's been put on it or it'll stick but it'll crack like it's just not gonna last as long so a really easy way to prep it is to use nail polish remover and this kind of gets rid of the top coat and then it's ready to paint once it's dry now when I've done um, this before when I first started painting on leather jackets I didn't realize like how little you need of this um, because very quickly it would stain my like it would get rid of the color of the leather so I'm gonna see if I can show you now quickly so if I start kind of like wiping away inside the lines of my letters. I hope this works. I'm not sounding like stupid. <laughs> but you only need a little bit and you can kind of see, I hope you can see how it's coming off already. And usually what this should do is leave like a white mark. So you'll be able to see where you've taken off the C 
sealing or the chemical or the wax or whatever is used in leather to kind of um, maintain it. All right, guys, um, this is not turning this white, which I thought it would. So my bad, that's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> but it's still, it's still something you gotta do if you wanna paint on it. So what I've done is I've done the big letters um, with the acetone, the nail polish mover. And now what I'm doing with the Q-tip for the shadow is I'm going around the letters because even though it's not turning it lighter like I thought it would it is taking the shine away from the leather so I'm still gonna use that for this oh, my idea was so cool guys this was meant to go light and then I was just gonna go around the letters and then I wouldn't have to paint this bit because it would just stain it and it would look a bit like the pencil mark. It's really annoying that that didn't work. <laughs> My first YouTube tutorial and it's coming like this. Anyways, we're gonna keep going because we're this far in now. So no point looking back now. And I'm still gonna go around these letters just in case the universe decides to back me up. It Okay guys, so once you've prepped your leather with nail polish remover, you can start to paint on it. Make sure it's pretty dry. I'm sorry my idea didn't work. I kind of thought it would. You guys can do your own experiment. I'm a bit bummed. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm a bit bummed about it, but you know. All right guys, so I'm using this really old marker that is running out of paint, clearly. But since my leather won't change color with no polish remover, it's meant to look something like that anyway. So I'm gonna use this and test it out. Alright, cool. So now that that's done, we're going to take another marker, but this time I'm getting, I'm using a new paint marker. So hopefully I'm going to get a more cleaner thing. So this marker had some life left in it, but not enough, which gives you that like rough feeling. So now I'm going to use a new paint marker to get a cleaner look. Alright guys, so this is done now, this bit, um, I'm really sorry that this acetone thing didn't work, um, if you are doing this or if you ever want to try it, have a go because it has worked for me in the past when I didn't want it to work and now I wanted it to work and of course it ain't happening, but an old marker 
kind of gave a similar effect. Um, if you are using the acetone and it does work, just be really careful about the edges because once you like touch something, like a little bit of acetone is not gonna probably do much. But if you put loads, it will mark it, like stain it. So just be careful. Um, I'm gonna finish this jacket, but I'm gonna do it like on uh, a time lapse um, so you guys can see it now. Um, and then I'll show you the finished result. But pretty much that's kind of how you paint a leather jacket. Alright guys, so I've finished illustrating all over the jacket. Um, I could probably still, I kind of still feel like I could do more coverage on it, but my eyes are getting tired and I think it's good enough. <laughs> um, but while I was illustrating this back with the little wings and the little devil tail, I had to take a bit of the fringe off just so it wouldn't be in the way. And I got an idea. So I've kept the fringe and I have this shiny piece of like spare fabric. I don't know if you can see, like it's quite glittery. Da, there we go. I'm pretty sheer, but I thought it would be fun to cut strips of this and put them back, like attach it to the leather and then put it back on so that's what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna cut strips of this and I'm gonna try to measure it to the same length as the um, the original leather pieces are um, that I've now managed to unravel completely so this is the piece of leather that was already here I'm gonna take my piece of fabric, lay it down. So what I would do is then now cut here and cut as many strips as I've got holes um, with fringe on them. I counted, there's like 11 in total, but one side of the jacket is already missing one. And I've kind of written on it anyway, so I think I'm just gonna leave that blank and pull it off and say it's on purpose. Um, that's the joy of working with like vintage clothes. If it's got minor like things missing on it, a button missing or a rip, you just say it's part of it. You figure, find out a way to make it on purpose and then you can kind of get away with that. So I'm gonna do that and yeah, I think that'll be done. The jacket will be done. All right, you can, if you're using something like um, jersey, or that's quite flexible, if you just pull on it, it'll kind of make itself into like a tube, so it won't just be like a thick piece of fabric. This is not working too much, but I'm still going to do it a little bit, just so it's a bit skinnier I mean it's not too much difference but right on last one okay okay so now we've got our piece of fringe now for this jacket each each hole had like two pieces of leather very generous and now we're just gonna put them together, add 
the glitter wand. Oops, what did I do? Add the glitter wand. So I've got three pieces, fold it in half. Loop it through the hole. And put it through. I mean, I'm sure you guys get it, right? And that's it. And now you've got a bit of like some, a bit of glitter, a bit of, a bit of shininess in your fringe and it's also gonna make it look a bit fuller, so. Yeah, I think it's kinda cool. So we're just gonna do that with all of them. All right, I'm gonna keep doing this till it's finished and then I'll show you guys. Okay guys, that's it. We're done with our jacket. Um, I'm gonna show you guys quickly a little spin. So you guys can see what it looks like. Um, so, yeah, our jacket's done. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I really like the theme of both the shadow side. I think it's important. Like, okay, I've drawn a little smoking hand, but I've quit smoking for like over a month now. So that's my part of the shadow side. Yeah, so I think it's important that we all recognize that we can all have a darker aspect to us. And in this journey I'm on about self-discovery and spirituality and just learning in general and a lockdown passion project. Um, I think it's nice to kind of do something to celebrate the kind of bad side of me, you know, because we're not all saints here. It's pretty interesting and also probably pretty important and if you start figuring yourself out and if you start figuring out what your shadow side is then it kind of helps you understand who you are and I think as well like to learn to accept that you've got these sides of you kind of gets rid of a lot of the guilt and anxiety of trying to be perfect. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you want to watch my other videos, I'm making my own tarot deck. I'm uh, illustrating it and I kind of just talk about random stuff, uh, astrology, personal stuff, whatever comes to my mind. So it would be cool if you guys wanted to watch that as well. But if not, I hope you learned something today and I'm sorry that acetone uh, nail polish trick didn't work on this. That was a bit embarrassing, but it's my first video. so. It is what it is. Cool. Uh, thank you again and have a good day. I'm gonna go eat something because I'm starving. Bye!